This school district is now eliminating all gifted programs, which is upsetting to a lot of parents. Let's talk about it. You know, it's always good to see the hometown make national news, but sometimes it's always for the wrong reasons. Uh, Let's read the title. Seattle Public Schools shut down gifted and talented program for being oversaturated with white and Asian students. Of course, this was from the New York Post, possibly politically biased in its titling. However, Andrew, this is a real thing that's happening right now. The highly capable program, which used to be called the gifted program, is being shut shut down or morphed in Seattle. Yeah, so for if you guys didn't know, gifted programs essentially are where you take these kids who tested higher on this kind of entrance exam and then they have a classroom together where the learning is a little bit more advanced than the regular classroom. This has been going on for decades. Um, David, you have some personal experience in this program growing up, but Uh, I do want to clear some stuff up about the article. It's not that I support this because I think I'm with a lot of people that are doubting this change that they're about to do, but I do think it's not exactly what people think. Right, so we are going to get into the discussion, the pros and the cons, the nuances of it. Make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications, check out Smile Last Sauce, smilelastsauce.com. Pre-orders open right now. Let's just take a look at the racial inequity in the program that they are referring to. Andrew, let's take a look at the chart. Obviously, um, this is all students in Seattle. This is the Seattle School District, by the way. Uh, I am a product of the gifted HC program in a neighboring school district that was based off Seattle programs. So I wouldn't have been affected by this, but uh, very, very close to this. And then let's look at the splits in the highly capable program. So basically, obviously, the proportion of black and Hispanic students went down. The proportion of white and Asian, and particularly Asian, went way up. Right. But I don't want to say if you look at these two circles, they're not like completely opposite. Like this racial distribution between the regular classroom, which is all students versus the highly capable. It's not like that the highly capable is like 50% white and 50% Asian. Right. There's still like some, you know, other races of kids in there. Right, right, right. And how you test in an HC is you have to get uh, a top two percentile distribution, I believe, on the math and verbal portion of a test. Right. That's how you gain entrance into this gifted HC program. Now, here's the thing. Not everybody takes the test. It's not a mandatory test. They are making it mandatory now, which I think is the right move. I think that's good to have every kid test in so that are given the chance to test in because otherwise then you're only keeping it for the families who decide to pay the fees so that their kid can test in. Anyways, more on that later. Right, and that's basically why the district is countering saying that the old model is highly inequitable for decades. Highly capable programs across the country like SPS served a very small number of black, Latino, indigenous, Alaskan, and Pacific Islander and low income students and taught more white and Asian students. So a lot of people are saying, you know, maybe parents have resources to put their kids in tutoring to do better on the test early and then that puts them on this track for the rest of their life. Right, but the main fear, and we're gonna see it in the comments down below, but we gotta go sift through this article a little bit more, is because the fear is that you're, you know, uh, you you wanna take away these gifted programs for the kids who deserve it, right? So what they're trying to do now, and I had to read the Seattle Times article because I was like, well, what paper wouldn't be biased against Seattle? It'd be the Seattle Times, right? So I was saying the basically how they're gonna implement it is they just want the kids all in the same classroom, right? So like, let's say the gifted kids are not in a different classroom. They have the same teacher, but somehow they're going to break up when it comes to certain subjects, they're going to break up the class so that kids are learning different things in the same classroom. So that's why this is confusing. Because they want the classroom to be less racially homogenous. Yes, they want the classrooms to be more multicultural and people uh, of the same neighborhood and the districts and like to share the same spaces in school, which that makes sense to me, right? Like, you know, you want all your kids together and to experience each other. Yeah, because they can have from more each other. socialization, right? Right, and and experience different types of people. But it's going to be difficult a little bit for the teachers to kind of break it up for people. So anyways, right. there's this one elementary. I just want to explain how this is happening. On a recent day in a first grade classroom, seven advanced learners, these would be the gifted kids, sat on a floor reading silently from their iPads. Several others wrote independently from their desks. Those would be like the regular students and a special education student wrote in a paraprofessional aid at the side. So they like, in. if you walked into the classroom during this like writing section of the first grade classroom, 
different groups of kids would be doing different levels of work. Right, right, right. Um, Dude, it got really complicated from this whole thing because there was a consultant that recommended this. And because some black parents whose kids were in the H. C program came out against the elimination of the HC program, but then they got accused of being like sellouts or tokens by this, uh, you know, like it, it's, it, there's always variants. I, I think the one thing I want to point out is there's always variances, even within a community on how they view something. Right. Right. Um, anyway, I, I, let's just get in my quick thoughts. I'll say this, man. I didn't experience this when I was in the gifted program, when I was in elementary, because our school district, I got sent to a school that was all white anyway. So even when I was in the classroom with whites and Asian kids, the regular kids were still white, but they were just more like blue collar whites. So I was like, but I will say this, that we kind of got segmented away from everybody because we didn't take our lunches with everybody. So it is true. You don't know the kids in your own grade. Like all the other kids that are in the regular classes, they know each other. But since we're doing so many field trips and like take different lunches, we didn't even know the kids that were our same age in the same school. Right. So you're saying there is a sense of maybe, at least in your program growing up, which I was not in the same program as David, uh, that it was too isolating. It is possibly. isolating for sure. And some kids have like weird social issues that develop from that. Look, but we, we produced saying... some really smart kids too that skipped, went to college in like seventh grade too. Yes. I think, yeah, from your gifted program, definitely there were a couple people who ended up doing some really weird stuff, but also some very bright kids who went on to uh, become doctors and all that stuff. Right, right, right. Yeah, no, I mean, we did hella science experiments. We're like dissecting frogs, doing Shakespeare. All the regular kids were just like, I don't know, but having pizza parties. To be David, I, I think the real question is, obviously, it's triggering because a lot of people are like, oh, the left, Seattle, they don't know what they're doing, which I, I could see why people are doubting this program. I'm kind of doubting the implementation, but it's really the devil is in the implementation. Like, it's... I don't think, I think this idea works in your mind. So I guess we're going to see what happens, but obviously it's not a school district I'm a part of. My yeah. kids aren't in it. I don't have kids. I don't live there. So I guess it's unfortunate for some people and I could see why people are upset. So I feel it. For sure, for sure. I mean, man, it's kind of tough because people got to make their own decisions. You know, we played a lot of street ball growing up. We played on the school basketball team. We, I played AAU basketball too. So I got exposed to a lot of different types of people through playing football and basketball and stuff like that. But I did, it's true that a lot of the white or Asian kids in the accelerated program, they don't necessarily share those same like outside interests. Yeah. So they're not going to get that multicultural socialization too as much. So, but at the same time, is it the school district's responsibility to create those interactions too. Right. So I think as a parent of a kid who's uh, being put into a regular classroom with every other kid, yeah, I think it's even more important on the parents now. And also what experiences are you going to allow your kid to have? Because I think in one sense, you could have kept the, kept the gifted programs, but created these uh, cooperative events or sports or th events that I'm all the kids share. So at least they all know each other to some level or share lunch or something. But then on the other hand, I don't know. Anyways, I, I fully agree with this. Listen, guys, people who come from uh, non-academic families or families that are disenfranchised or growing up in poverty, I think there absolutely has to be government funded programs to address those concerns and situations uh, for their own sake, for the, in, in the family's sake, the individual sake, but also society at large's sake. But I don't know if eliminating the gifted programs that's definitely a suboptimal plan. Yeah, I mean, for me, example, growing up, I was at a different school and I was in a class in just like the regular classrooms, but essentially at home, I would say at, the home life was more like a gifted program because yeah. our parents were Asian and our parents cared about academics. So I was doing extra work outside of it. Obviously, David was in a different program growing up. Uh, so then essentially I felt like a some version of, of maybe a gifted kid in a regular classroom, but I just didn't test into right, it. Right, right, right. And know? I think so I was that, like, doesn't that go to personal responsibility nowadays, like where everybody's trying to offload everything onto public infrastructure and they don't want to be responsible. I don't know. It's like tough. I don't, I understand different people got different home lives. Some people's parents are not even at home because they're like out of three jobs or something like that. Somebody just said Washington state now became one of the worst states. 
Uh, <laughs> that's actually really funny. Somebody said, moving to Seattle is what turned me from a liberal to a centrist conservative. Washington State is off the rails. I'll tell you this, man. Uh, I think a lot of people in Washington State, Andrew, who run it, they're well-intentioned. But in terms of the actual implementation of the policies... I really disagree with some mm. of the stuff they're doing. Mm. Um, of course, people are talking about just how, you know, like, you know, there there's needs to be programs to help the bottom uh, in terms of academics, but you can't do it by taking off the top, mm. right? Because there were, people are drawing uh, comparisons to <laughs> socialism, communism. Right, except, right. Well, here's the funny thing is, Andrew, China is considered a communist country, but they certainly believe in academic meritocracy. So I don't know if it's like True. really tied to... yeah. Um, of course, there were some comments coming in from Latino and black people saying, hey, guys, I still believe in this, even if, quote unquote, people think that I should be on one side or the other side of the issue. I believe in these gifted programs. Mm. Right. Um, of course, other people came out and said, yo, it just has to do with distribution of resources. Other p kids, they don't understand, like when you come from a family that's broken or doesn't have these resources, how can the kids possibly test into the top 2% academically at a young age? Yeah, I think the one thing, though, that they are missing in this plan is like, I, I guess it is a more... You could argue it's a more diverse, regular classroom when everybody's together, but it's not like the smart kids are going to... It's not mandatory for them to, like, mentor the not-as-gifted kids. You know what I mean? Or, yeah, just not as academically yeah. Like, is there that program? Are they going to, like... Are the kids... Are the gifted kids going to start teaching the class or something? That would be crazy. I don't know. <laughs> like it's like a mini inter teach for America. Um, somebody just said, why don't we put more five foot tall Asians on the basketball or football team? That's pretty funny. That's yeah. funny. Yeah. Somebody said, if you're worried about diversity in that field, obviously um, this uh, is from an African-American guy. He said, so instead of helping and doing something for the kids who are being left behind by the system, we're just going to keep the smart kids from advancing. Yeah, I, I agree. I think there just needs to be more programs for the people who are starting more from the bottom you just need more programs for them. I mean, that 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 makes more sense. Yeah, you have to stabilize things. Yeah, like you said, not everybody's born into the same family. Different groups have different ratio distributions. And it's like the government should do what it can to stabilize people's living situations. Obviously, you can't account for everything. Their home life is their home life. Um, somebody said, this is a more conservative comment. I just wanted to say at some point, at some point, ultra progressive policies will become regressive. We are going backwards. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think time will tell. I think we're going to see how this all plays out, and uh, I hope they're ready to make adjustments. No change is ever comfortable at first, though. Almost all change to anything like seems like a bad idea. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I remember. I mean, remember like desegregation sounded like a bad idea at one point. Yeah, that's that's true, right? No, it's true. I'll, I'll tell you guys this story. Like I said, my situation is not the same as these situations because it was a blue collar white kids on the regular classes. But the few minority kids I remember was like me as the Asian kid. Nicole Sharper was Jamaican. Melissa Bowie Traga was Venezuelan. And we were just all kind of like I wouldn't say we were a super tight knit group, but we definitely knew we were the minorities at the white school in the gifted program. Cause there, my, my area just didn't even have a lot of Asians period. There was some half Japanese kids, but they didn't act that Asian. Um, just somebody said, uh, you cannot redistribute success, but you can sure as hell redistribute failure. I think that that's a bar, but it's a little bit over, over set. You know what I mean? It's a little exaggerated. Um, because like you said, the program of mixing everybody, it could work. I don't know if I believe in it over 50%, but it could, there's a chance. You gotta let things play out get the big data, get the metadata, and then make analysis and make reads from that point. Well, I, I think it's better to do it at an elementary level, though. I will say this this makes a lot more sense in like a one to fourth grade to mix everybody together and then let them start separating themselves when it gets to fifth and sixth grade. And then right. high school class has got to be different, of, of course. course. And then, of course, college is right. 100% going to work it's, like yeah, that. Yeah, so I think if you're going to do it, do it when they're young and see what happens. Um, this Latino guy, interestingly enough, Andrew, he said, I can kind of understand why you're doing this. Let's be honest. Asians in Seattle are rich. White people are usually middle to upper middle class. And then you just see for Latinos, they just got here. It's been difficult for them. Usually they're going to be the first generation to go to college. And a lot of people come from broken homes. And it's just like the grind is different. 
the grind is different for certain people born into different situations. And I do agree where this guy is coming from. Like, if you just don't have the resources very young, you don't have the coaching, you don't have the stability, you don't have the background. It's like, it is, life is like that. I also don't think like these parents who got their kids in the gifted program don't just think just because they're in a classroom with regular kids that all of a sudden they're going to become like dumb. Like that is the wrong way to think too. Right, right, right. Right. Uh, but anyways... Any last points, David? Um, somebody said that this is just going to lead to what happened in California where everybody puts their kids in really expensive school districts that know, like, basically, people are going to either go to private school or hyper expensive public school districts if they eliminate the pro uh, these programs from middle to lower middle class school districts. Well, Seattle, the clock is ticking. You got some time to figure this out and to show everybody that it's not going to be a failure. And if it does fail... So be it. Go bring back the gifted programs. You know what I think, man? I think that a lot of people have good intentions, but they just don't understand how to execute something. So you end up just coming up with a plan that makes everybody mad. Like, there needs to be more programs to support people in any aspect of life that they're not good at. Like, I always thought for the kids who really love basketball, but they couldn't make the basketball team you know, yeah, I guess they could do the, you know, parks and recreation version, which is a little bit lower tier, but it's like they needed, basically there needs to be more like G leagues or D leagues, just like they have the G league or D league for the NBA. There's got to be just a sub program where kids who really want to be good at school, but maybe they're just not testing into that top 2%. They can go into like the high effort class. You know what I'm saying? Like how come nobody's thinking about a third solution? Everybody wants to keep it the old way or eliminate it. And I'm like, neither of these are optimal solutions. I guess I could see why they're trying to do it in the sense that if all these kids go to different schools growing up, then it's going to stratify Seattle. And like all these kids who live in Seattle together, they're going to be split up into further and further groups. So, I don't know. But anyways, guys, you know what? Time is going to tell how this works out. It's going to be largely on the teachers and the parents. Whoa, what do we know? Teachers and parents. It comes down to teachers and parents again. You know, I remember my junior year, I wrote a 30-page uh, essay on affirmative action reform. And my general takeaway was that, yes, you need it. It's a great program, but the implementation matters a lot. And it seems like they always get the implementation wrong. I don't know why. Maybe because humans are flawed or... A trillion reasons. Let us know what you think of this situation in the comment section below. Until next time, we're the Hop Out Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.